Recently, I revisited the story of Neville Goddard and his mentor, Abdullah, in which Neville shared that he was going to go to Barbados and he was going third class, in which Neville got a response from Abdullah, which was, who told you you are going to Barbados and that you're going third class? You went to Barbados and you went first class. Now, this is what we can call a first class example of not identifying with doubt if it appears. If a person appears to reveal a doubt identified with, we can, in that moment, disentangle our mind from the evidence of the senses and think feelingly from an invisible state, mentally feeling it as though it has all the distinctness of reality. And then it appeared that way. From that state, Neville goes to Barbados and he went first class. In today's conversation, I would like to share with you my own personal experiences of recently applying revision in an interesting way. And I trust that you too will enjoy and benefit greatly and will then realize that if doubt arises, that's fine. No shame, no condemnation. Think feelingly from the premise of already being who you desire to be, already having what you desire. I am that. I'd like to share a story, and then I would like to discuss revision. So I want to talk about how deep this goes from my personal experience. Recently, what happened was, and I've seen this happen a number of times, so I'm going to share a recent story. I had this uh, business idea, and I wanted to share it with a friend. So I started talking about it, and they appeared to say something that I would call doubt. In other words, they doubted that that idea that I shared could be brought into fruition. Now, knowing that others reflect our beliefs, our thoughts, which thoughts generated from beliefs, I brought awareness to identification to a belief that so obviously played out as my friend reflecting a doubt. Now, I wanted to take this a step further because, as Neville says here, that one is unwell. You prune that branch. You don't accept one thing in the world as final unless it conforms to the ideal you want to realize in the world. Because I don't desire for my friend to identify with that doubt. Certainly, they don't truly desire to identify with that doubt. If they identify with that doubt, I could end up witnessing the appearance of them playing out that identification as I would believe that they would have that doubt. Although that was doubt identification, or we could say adversary identification, opponent identification playing out. And then perhaps it shall appear that they will continue to reflect that doubt. And so he says, but you do it daily. If you do not prune it daily, you will get out of the habit. Then weeds will grow. Everyone who really is a gardener, who calls themselves a gardener, a gardener in the garden of God, for every day is the opportunity to really prune the tree, this wonderful tree. And so everyone that you meet is a branch rooted in the vine that you are. And you are that special tree in the garden of God. A tree bearing life. A tree bearing fruit for the food of the nations. So I wanted to explore this further. Where else does this appear? And so I said, where did you hear about that? And so they mentioned one of our mutual friends. They heard it from this mutual friend. 
So now it appears that this friend is identified with this doubt. And so I said, let's go a level deeper into this. I said this to myself. I didn't say it to them. I said, where did they hear this from? And they mentioned someone on the internet. So it appears that my friend in front of me is identified with this doubt. And they claim to have heard it from one of our mutual friends who appears to be identified with that doubt who then heard that doubt from somebody that we don't know on the internet who appears to be identified with that doubt. So I said, and this isn't the first time I did it. I do this often. I said, I know where this is all arising from. It's identification to a particular belief that is generating that doubt. And this person, my friend in front of me, is reflecting that doubt. And then if I ask them where they got it from, they'll share with me this other person in which I'm imagining them to have doubt. So I'm imagining my friend to have doubt. I'm imagining our mutual friend to be identified with this doubt. And then I'm imagining this person that I've never met before to be identified with this doubt. To prove it an equation, what if I release this identification to this belief that was generating the doubt? And sure enough, it changed. How so? They no longer appeared to reflect doubt it's like they never saw it any other way other than mutual harmony and respect in relation to that vision. And that's how I desire to see them. I desire those relationships to be mutually harmonious. And same with our mutual friend. Mutually harmonious relationships. So if a doubt was identified within, then I could start imagining people to appear that way, to reflect that doubt. So what was interesting was I went and spoke with our mutual friend, and there was no indication when I brought up this idea that there was any doubt. Never mentioned anything. Then, interestingly, I went on the internet and searched up this individual, and in their entire philosophy, it shows no sign of them being anywhere close to being identified with that particular doubt. Neville says, So you left the world of innocence and entered the world of experience to return to the world of imagination from whence you started. And when you return, you are all imagination, and nothing is impossible to you. But before you do, you can test your creative power knowingly. Do you know someone who is in need? And so I saw him and I saw myself really as a reflection of being in need to release that identification to that particular belief that was generating that doubt and other doubts that was playing out in the relationship with my friend, our mutual friend, and this person I've never met before on the internet. And so he says, bring them before your mind's eye and see their need fulfilled. Lose yourself in the thrill, the feeling of joy for your friend. Do nothing on the outside to make it so. Simply persist in seeing him in this new state. And no power on earth can stop it from being so. And that is what that appears as. That's why in Thursday's video I said, there's no need to persuade influence, convince, or change another person. There's no one to change but self. All what appears as visible effects, physical and metaphysical, all arise naturally from that state, automatically. Then the world appears that way. So does my friend appear that way. And I didn't do it, as there's only God. God appearing and animating all that appears through imagination. And so he says, if you think he can oppose you, you are looking at the world of Satan, for there is no physical other. God is one. There is no opposition. This reminds me actually of the video that I did recently. I'll link the description to it, in which we discussed Enter the Dragon. And his teacher says, I see your talents have gone beyond the mere physical level. Your skills are now at the point of spiritual insight. I have several questions. What is the highest technique you hope to achieve 
in which his response was, to have no technique. Very good, he said. What are your thoughts when facing an opponent? In which his response was, very interesting. There's no opponent. And so he asked, why is that? And he said, because the word I does not exist. In other words, we're imagining opponents. We're conjuring up in our imagination these imaginal conversations in which we may be appearing to be in conflict with another person. Another person reflecting doubt, confrontation, etc. Now, as these conversations no longer exist in mind, in other words, we put off that conversation, carry on conversations with our friends from the premise of fulfilled desire, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, our true way of being. They appear that way. Such as my example. And this is not the first time, as mentioned. I've shared many stories all throughout these videos. We've been working with Neville's information for a number of years now. And I continue to practice this because if doubt appears when I'm out and about, when I'm doing whatever, and appears that another person is revealing doubt, then I know I'm generating that experience through imagination. And if I no longer desire to experience that, then I put off that conversation. And so there is no opponent. So when he said, if you think he can oppose you, you're looking at the world of Satan, for there is no physical other. God is one. It's an interesting way of saying it. If we look up the etymology of the word Satan, we find the word adversary. And so this adversary is depicted as an entity who challenges or opposes the human's faithfulness to God. This was discussed very nicely in the book Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. And what he said, we're generating this entity. And if we have a conversation in our imagination with this bundle of programming, which we can call adversary, or if we, more specifically, have a conversation with the specific beliefs that are related to that bundle of programming, which we can call adversary, and we bring those beliefs to peace with self-talk. For example, I might say, where does this doubt arise from? Not with my friend, but within myself. Because I know that I'm generating the experience through imagination. So I have a conversation with myself. Where does this doubt arise from? And then I may recall an event in which... At that particular event, I became identified with that belief. And so we apply what is known in the Bible as repentance, in which Neville says the book of Mark begins repent. That's revision. To repent, that's revision. Which means, as he says, that's changing your thinking, thereby changing your belief which causes a corresponding change in your world, as in no longer identified with that belief that is generating the experiences of doubt reflected in the conversations with my friend. So my friend is not an opponent. Our mutual friend is not an opponent. This person on the internet is not an opponent. They could only appear that way based on identification to particular beliefs in which then a person, if they're identified with that belief and not realize that it is their identification that is resulting in this appearance of opponent, if they don't realize that, they may point to what we refer to as visible causes, as in, my friend is the cause of, or my friend's friend is the cause of. Or this person on the internet that shares their information with them is the cause of. Those are effects. There's only one cause, the one universal cause within I am. And so what do I imagine of that cause to appear as? And so he says, anytime 
You use your imagination lovingly on behalf of another. This was from his pruning shears of revision lecture. You are literally mediating God to them. Love, true way of being. So anytime you use your imagination lovingly on behalf of another, you are at that moment literally mediating God to them. He says, imagination is the redemptive power of the world, and you are actually mediating God to them by using it in a loving, wonderful way. Again, why? Because this is the art of repentance, which is revision. As he said, that's changing your thinking. All we're doing is changing our thinking. Was the thinking unlovely? We change our thinking to being from the premise of being love, having love, experiencing love in relationship with others by imagining it that way from the premise of it being so now. As he says, that's changing your thinking, thereby changing your belief, which causes a corresponding change in your world, such as my example, such as what Abdullah did with Neville Goddard. Who said you were going to Barbados, third class? You are already in Barbados, and you went there first class. So it could appear that Neville was not in Barbados and that he said he had gone there third class. But by acknowledging that he was already in Barbados and he had gone there first class, so did Neville then appear that way. And so he was using his imagination lovingly on behalf of another as Neville had that desire. He said he had a burning desire to be in Barbados. And so we have an opportunity to reimagine lovingly, mediating God to them. So this is the process. And I'll run through it, what he shared in his pruning shears of revision lecture, and I'll share my experiences in relation to my story. So in relation to my story, I like to go far on the vine. If they said it, who said it to them? Where did they learn that from? Where did they learn that from? Where did they learn that from? And I prune the entire sequence. So he says, at the end of the day, I review my day. I don't judge it. I simply review it. So you could do this with your day. As mentioned, I did it with that entire conversation, imaginal act lineage, imaginary lineage that appeared as the conversation with my friend in which he appeared to also be pointing to a visible cause which was our mutual friend, in which our mutual friend also seemed to be pointing to a visible cause, which was this person on the internet. There is no visible cause. These are all effects. If we change how we relate to the world, in other words, particularly in this regard, not identifying with beliefs that generate opposition, so does the opposition not appear. He says, I look over my entire day, all the episodes, all the events, all the conversations, all the meetings, and then I see it clearly in my mind's eye. I rewrite it. I rewrite it and make it conform to the ideal day I wish I had experienced. I take scene after scene and rewrite it, revise it. And having revised my day, then in my imagination, I relive that day, the revised day, and I do it over and over in my imagination until the seeming imagined state begins to take on to me the tones of reality. So as mentioned, I can have a conversation with myself and revise it through conversation, or I may reimagine that entire sequence. So I may reimagine my friend saying, this wonderful business idea that you have it is so exciting. It is so exciting and wonderful and inspiring and I would include that they bring up our mutual friend and talk about how our mutual friend is doing it as well and how our mutual friend had heard it from this individual on the internet to move forward with the initiative and how it benefits them, etc. And sure enough, I did something like that and saw it in the information that this individual on the internet was presenting. And I heard it from our mutual friend. 
He says, it seems that it's real, that I actually did experience it. And I found from my experience that these revised days, if really lived, will change my tomorrows. He says, when I meet people tomorrow, that today disappointed me. And remember, they're not actually disappointing us. We may be identified with a belief that plays out as some kind of theatrical experience in which we say that that disappoints us and results in dwelling in that state or or brings us into another state. And so he says, when I meet people tomorrow that today disappointed me, they will not tomorrow, for in me I have changed the very nature of that being. And having changed him, he bears witness tomorrow of the change that took place within me. It is my duty to take this garden and really make it a garden by daily using the pruning shears of revision. So let's go back to uh, the lecture, Follow the Pattern. He said, Here we are called upon to guard this truth, for only as we follow the pattern, which is the truth, are we saved. If all things are possible to your imagination, and you are all imagination, you should be able to accomplish anything and fulfill every desire. But first, you must be willing to believe you are all imagination. It's entirely up to you. Do you believe you are a mortal or all imagination, living in infinite states, the basic state from which we operate is our body of belief. If you believe you are limited, your thoughts flow from that belief. But if this principle is true, and you place a modification on that body of belief, you should produce a corresponding change as your outer world is forever reflecting your inner thoughts. So we move in imagination to the state desire by thinking feelingly from that premise. They are ideal now. I am ideal now. Capture that feeling. Certainly, you could revise by generating the scenes in which they appear that way. What I also found is I can capture the feeling. Someone said something that appears as doubt. That's okay. No shame. No condemnation, no need to try to convince or argue with them. Disentangle my mind from the evidence of the senses, which is just past imaginal activity. Release identification. If there's a lot of emotional resistance, release it. Be still and know that I am. Release identification. And then capture the feeling of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Capture the feeling. How could they appear any other way after that? I notice this real time during conversations. They appear to reflect a doubt, disentangle my mind from the evidence of the senses. Real time. Change happens in an instant. Real time in the moment. Disentangle my mind from the evidence of the senses. Be still and know that I am. Capture the feeling of being love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And sure enough, the conversation changes. They appear that way. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You can say, From my true way of being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, others reflect my way of being. As I continue to remain in this ideal way of being, others appear to reflect as loving, harmonious relationships. As others appear to reflect loving, harmonious relationships. It further affirms my state of being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. By remaining in that feeling, others appear transformed to reflect that way of being. 
knowing that I am all imagination, feeling it as real in imagination, being love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, reflects that way as others appearing that way as far as the senses proceed. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.